Welcome to Simple Control's basic one-room tutorial. In this tutorial, we will get to know the Simple System app, discuss the different methods of control, and finally, how to program for a single room. If you are a Simple Control app user, you may follow along as well. Simple System is an app-based universal remote for your AV and home automation devices. Simple System currently supports iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, running iOS 8.4 or later. We will refer to the iOS device as your iOS controller. Simple System is able to control multiple devices in your room, including your AV receiver, set-top box, Blu-ray player, media player, television, thermostats, and home automation hubs which provide control over lighting and other items. These are what we refer to as devices in Simple System. Simple System currently offers three methods of control, IP, IR, and serial. IP-compatible devices, such as an AV receiver, are able to be controlled directly through your local network via Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Some devices, although they may connect to the Internet, do not support IP control. For these and other older devices, we recommend the use of IR control. IR control can be accomplished with the use of the Simple Blaster Complete found at the Simple Store website. The Simple Blaster Complete comes with the Simple Cable Complete, which offers two IR emitters and one blaster. The emitters can be used to control single devices such as your set-top box or a Blu-ray player, while the blaster can be used to control multiple devices by line of sight. Serial control is accomplished using the Simple Blaster and Simple Cable Serial. To determine which method is best for your devices, please refer to the compatibility page on the Simple Control website. Simple System is an activity-based controller. Imagine entering the room and you want to watch TV. To watch TV, you pick up your AV receiver's remote and power it on, and set the correct input to cable sat. Then you pick up your TV remote and power the TV on, and set it to the right input HDMI 1. You then need to power on the set-top box using its remote. Once it is all on, you then use the set-top box remote to control it, but need to use the AV receiver's remote to control the volume. In Simple System, we combine the action of picking up those remotes and pressing all those buttons to power on and set the right input into a single press of an activity button. Selecting the activity sends the appropriate start commands needed to start that activity, and then opens a remote design where the primary remote for that activity is the main device for that activity. For example, when starting Watch TiVo, the TiVo remote is the main remote shown, but the volume control is for the AV receiver. In just a little bit, we will go over how to create these activities. Before we can begin programming Simple System, we need to go to hardware setup. We have determined that our Blu-ray player and TV will require IR control, so we need to use a Simple Blaster Complete. Let's get it set up. We plug the Simple Blaster into power using the provided USB power cable. We then connect the Simple Cable Complete by plugging it into the 3.5mm plug on the Simple Blaster. We are now ready to place our emitter cable. To do this, we need to find the IR sensor of the device we wish to control. We can find the IR sensor by using a flashlight and shining the light across the front of the device, usually around its display, until you can see a small light bulb. That is the device's IR sensor. You can then place the emitter directly over the IR sensor. Next, we connect to the Simple Blaster's ad hoc network. To do this, we will need to go to settings on our iOS controller. Select Wi-Fi and we should see our Simple Blaster listed under the Devices section. We will select it. We then get a pop-up that this does not have internet. We select Join anyway. Now we wait a couple of seconds for it to connect and open the Simple Blaster's Network Settings web page. On the web page, the Simple Blaster will scan for local networks. We will find and select our network name from the list provided. In this case, we will select Simple Control as our network name. We can then enter our network password, then select Join Network, and Save. We wait the 40 seconds for the unit to reboot, and then select Proceed. We are then taken back to the iOS controller settings screen, and are connected back to our local Wi-Fi network. The Simple Blaster is now ready to add and control our devices.
When we first launch the Simple System app, you will be asked to sign up. For the purpose of this video, we will assume you have already followed the steps for activating your Simple System license purchased from your Simple System dealer, and therefore have already created a Simple Store account. So we will select Already Have an Account to sign in. We enter our email address for the Simple Store account. then our password. We can then select Go on the keyboard. We are now signed in to our account and ready to start programming our Simple System. Simple System is a multi-room solution. For the purpose of this video, we are focusing on a single room setup. The same concept can be applied to your other rooms if you are programming for multiple rooms. First, we will go in and change the name of our room from the default home to living room, since that is the room we are programming for. To do this, we will select the back arrow at the top left of the screen. This will take us to our room screen where we can add or edit rooms. We can select the edit pencil and then our default home room. This will open the edit room screen where we can change the name of the room from home to living room, as well as change the image if desired. For this video, we will leave the image as is and save to exit. Press the edit button to get out of edit mode for the room screen and then select our newly named living room. For this room, we have three source devices, an IP-controlled TiVo, which we will use for watching cable, an IR-controlled Blu-ray player, an IP-controlled Apple TV 4, and then we have display and sound devices, an IR-controlled Samsung TV, and an IP-controlled Pioneer receiver. We will start by adding our receiver and TV. We select the Add Device button, find and select our receiver from the local network list, We will select our model, All Models Zone 1. On the Edit Device screen, here we will need to enable Power for All Activities and Volume for All Activities, as we use it for volume control for all of our sources. We can save to exit. We are prompted to create an activity for the receiver. In this case, we will select No. But if you do use your receiver streaming capabilities, you would want to select Create an Activity. Next, we can add the TV, which is an IR controlled device. For this, we are using the blaster cable, so we will select the simple blaster and IR port 3. Select Type as TV and select S to scroll to Samsung and then choose All Models. Before we select Save, we will need to enable Power for All Activities, as this is a display device for all of our sources. It should be powered on for all three activities. With that enabled, we can select Save. Now we select No to create an activity, as we do not use this as a source device. If you were using it as a streaming device, then you would select Create Activity. We are now ready to add our source devices. We select Add Device. Under Local Network Devices, we find our TiVo listed. For TiVo, we will need to enter our Media Access Key. This is a unique key found in your TiVo settings. Once entered, we can select Save. We are then prompted to create an activity for this device. And because this is a source device, we will select Create Activity. We are then prompted to add a TV guide. We will select Yes. We will then be shown a list of our providers for our area. We will select our provider and save. We will then be shown a list of our channel lineup from that provider. We will select HD to filter out non-HD channels and select our favorite channels. When we are done selecting our favorite channels, we can select Save at the top right. We are done adding the TiVo and creating the Watch TiVo activity. We can now add the Blu-ray player. Because we are controlling this using the Simple Blaster, we will select it from the local network list 
and choose the IR port 1 that we are using to control it. We will select Type Blu-ray Player, L to scroll to LG, and select All Models. There are no special settings, so we can select Save. We are then prompted to create an activity, and this is a source, so we will select Create an Activity. Next, we add our Apple TV. It is shown in the local network list, so we select it. We are then prompted to enter the pairing code to pair with the Apple TV. We enter the provided code on the Apple TV. Once paired, we are brought to the Add Device screen, where we can select Save. We are then prompted to create an activity for this device, and because it is a source device, we select Create an Activity. Finally, we need to tell Simple what input each source is connected to on the receiver. We can do this by selecting the receiver under the Devices list, which will open the Edit Device screen for the receiver. We can then select Input Switching. Here we can see a list of available inputs for our receiver. We know that we have plugged the Blu-ray into Input Blu-ray, so we select it. The TiVo into DVR, so we select it. And the Apple TV into HDMI 1. We can then select to go back to the Edit Device screen and save. We have now automatically set the inputs for each activity. So now we have added our five devices and have created our three activities. You can also see that the system off activity was automatically added. Let's go ahead and verify that the start commands for each activity are set correctly. To do this, we will remain in edit mode, indicated by the blue edit button above the activities and select our Watch TiVo activity. This brings us to the Edit Activity screen, where we can change the name as well as the image used. We can see that our Opens Remote for Device is set to the TiVo, because it is the main remote for this activity. We can also see that our Volume Control is set for the Pioneer Receiver, as it provides the volume for this activity. We can then look at our Start commands and see that the Power On for the TV and Receiver have been added, as well as the Input DVR command. These were automatically added from when we enabled the power for all activities and volume for all activities, as well as input switching when we added the devices. All looks good here, so we will select save to exit. We can now review our other activities as well. We will select our watch Blu-ray activity. Here we will notice that there is no command to power on the Blu-ray player. Being that the Blu-ray player only needs to be powered on for this activity, we can select it as our power device for this activity. By doing so, the power on and off commands are automatically added to the start and stop commands for the activity. We can verify that they've been added to the start and stop commands by looking at the edit activity screen. This all looks good, so we will save to exit. Now we can check the Apple TV. Apple TVs just go to sleep, so we need to send the menu command to help wake it up. We can select Add Command under our Start Commands, choose the target as the Apple TV, and the command as Menu. We can then save to exit. We are now ready to use our activities, so we will select the blue Edit button to get out of edit mode. You will notice we now only see the three activities we created. Let's test Watch TiVo. The start commands are sent and the TiVo remote is shown with the volume display for the Pioneer receiver. We also can see our channel guide. Some devices such as the TiVo, Dish Network, and DirecTV provide feedback for what is being currently watched, and also through the simple service provide DVR management. We can use the guide to change channels, view more information about a show, or set a recording. We can select DVR to view and watch recorded TV as well. When we are done, we can go back to the activity screen and select the red system off activity to turn the room off. Simple Control recommends that you create a backup of your configuration. 
To back up to Simple Service, we can select the Settings icon and scroll to find Backup to Simple Service. After selecting it, you will be given the option to send yourself a recovery link. Enter your email address and select Send. The configuration will then be backed up to the Simple Service. If you reset or make an unwanted change to your configuration, you can select Restore from Simple Service in Settings or use the recovery link. Simple Hub allows your controllers to synchronize. Each time you make a change to your configuration on one of your iOS controllers, Simple Hub will automatically update your other controllers instantly. Even if none of your iOS controllers are actively running Simple System, Simple Hub keeps track of those changes and updates your controllers when they come back online. The Simple Hub also provides additional features such as configuration lockdown, remote access, echo integration, and triggers to name a few. To set up the Simple Hub, you will need to connect the hub to the network via Ethernet. You can then plug in the provided USB power cable and wait about a minute for the hub to power up and get online. With our configuration created and backed up, we are now ready to pair with your Simple Hub. To do so, we will select the Settings icon, then select Simple Hub. We should see our Simple Hub device listed under the Simple Hub devices with its version. We select it, and at the top of the screen, we can select Pair with Simple Hub. Our configuration has now been paired with the Simple Hub. We can verify that it is licensed and paired by selecting the Simple Hub device again. We can then go back to Settings and see that we are paired. We recommend once again performing the steps to back up to Simple Service once you have successfully paired. To pair remaining iOS controllers, open the Simple System app and you will be prompted that a home has been detected and asked to pair. Select Yes, and our configuration will be inherited. We have successfully finished our one room programming. In this tutorial, we defined what devices are, learned about the three methods of control, and to check the compatibility list for each device for the best method of control, how to set up a Simple Blaster Complete Wi Fi. We went over how to rename a room and how to add devices and activities to that room. We then went through the backup to Simple Service and pairing with the Simple Hub. For more information on what we covered, please take a look at our user guide as well as our knowledge base for any troubleshooting tips. We hope you enjoy your simple system.